Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, bleary-eyed, freshly awakened and ready to uh, react to a piece of news for you here on Justin Hawkins Rides Again. Um, The news that just landed on my desk is startling. Apparently music officially, according to people who have researched this, um, it officially heals. (coughs) Who knew? Right. I'm going to react to this piece of news and uh, talk about it in some more depth. Justin Hawkins rides again, bleary-eyed and only just awakened again. Yes, indeed. All right. Yeah, new research proves that music heals and suggests that in the future music could be prescribed to help us focus, feel happier, uh, relax and overcome sadness. Um, I don't know, that thing about sadness is quite funny. Already I have to react to that because I feel like the daily existence is, I don't know, um, It's a, isn't it like a spectrum of emotions? Isn't there some things that make you sad, some things that make you angry, some things that frustrate you, some things that delight you, some things that beguile you, <laughs> um, some things that you know make you hungry, uh, and all that stuff. And, but you know what I mean? It's, I think there's a, <clears throat> a myriad of experiences that you have every day. So uh, I know sadness is often a thing that you're supposed to sit with and I suppose process, but apparently if it's, you know, if it's a bit much, then you can use music to overcome it. Um, research from the British Academy of Sound Therapy, the BAST, brilliant, BAST, great, has shown that there is a, a common dosage for music and revealed how long an individual needs to listen to it for a therapeutic effect to be experienced. In recent years, psychologists have proven proven that music can have a positive effect on our health. So researchers at BAST were keen to discover whether it would be possible to prescribe music to help us with specific mood states. So uh, if... if, Hang on a second. Alarm bells! Um, If music is a mood-altering art medium then doesn't that make it potentially addictive as well? I know people that are addicted to music. I'm one of them. Um, their study, Music as Medicine, tested 7,581 uh, participants and found that 89% believe music to be essential for their health and well-being. So there's no doubt that it plays an important part in their daily lives. Whilst 90.15% participants used music to relax, 81.80% used it to make them feel happy. to process and or release sadness, and 32.53% to aid concentration. Uh, Okay, I mean, I don't think I've ever put music on with a view to cheering myself up or or focusing my mind or, I don't know, processing. I mean, I suppose, yeah, you know what, maybe we all do that. Maybe Maybe we only listen to music emotionally. Maybe it's just something that speaks to the mood that you're in. In that moment, um, but you know, I do think that the way. Sorry, <laughs> sometimes I do this. Can you hear that? The way the way I consume music has changed a lot lately. Anyway, and I, and I, I always I always use music to make myself feel pumped up and excited. Uh, yeah, that's the main use for it. But but I suppose that is combating sadness in a way and you know deflecting from it. I don't know. Um, the best music for relaxation had a slow tempo. Simple melody and no lyrics with an optimum listening time of 13 minutes and many benefits were reported including decreased muscle tension, negative thoughts disappearing, feeling peaceful and contented and being able to sleep better. Yeah, I think I know the kind of music you're talking about. It's that stuff that you get in um, posh spas whenever you've... uh, reluctantly accompanied uh, a partner to a, a posh spa and then you hear that sort of um, music and at first your eyes roll you think that's just hippie nonsense but actually it does get under your skin and it makes you feel really c- serene I suppose meanwhile only nine minutes of music mostly songs with a driving rhythm fast tempo and positive lyrical content is required to make f- people feel uplifted an impressive 89% had improved energy levels 65 percent laughed more and others felt more in control of their lives or able to take on anything that's how i use it i think an encouraging result for medical professionals looking for new ways to treat patients with mental health conditions such as anxiety and depression 
In another study, high-tempo music was also found to enhance performance during exercise when women training heard pop songs with over 170 beats per minute. There aren't many of those around. Scientists found they began to put in more effort, particularly during endurance activities such as running, or cycling. Um, music was also found to aid focus of the BAST, I love that word, uh, test subjects who used music for concentration. 13 minutes was enough to clear their mind, help them work better in their job. That's uh, 91% of people said that. And make decisions more clearly. And finally, music containing lyrics that people could connect with, uh, again, 13 minutes of exposure to that, was found to be best for sadness, causing listeners to feel a sense of relief, less overwhelmed, more stable, and less likely to be triggered by an issue. Liz Cooper, the founder of BAST, um, has previously collaborated with ambient musical trio Marconi Union to produce an eight-minute track designed to relax the listener and induce a trance-like state. Cooper explained that the track, titled Weightless, contains a sustaining rhythm that starts at 60 beats per minute and gradually slows to around 50, meaning the listener's heartbeat will naturally slow down to match the track's BPM. Uh, BPM stands for beats per minute. Um, Bast's fascinating new study and Marconi Union's soothing track are further proof that music does indeed heal. So, I don't know, this, is this a completely different way to consume music uh, to people who are musicians or appreciate music in a more in-depth way? Um, I don't know, because I think there's a, if, you're, if you're a muso or if you're interested in like, the way stuff's put together, the likelihood of putting some soothing, um, simplistic stuff on that doesn't challenge you in any way is reduced, I think, because there's always like a feeling like you have to... You almost feel obliged to try and um, broaden your understanding of complicated music, you know. I know that's what I do. I, t I probably wouldn't put something on that's overtly simple because I just don't know if I'd learn anything from that. But actually, maybe I should do that. Maybe I'd feel more or less anxious, you know. Um, is that a primal rather than intellectual way to c consume music? I mean, I think it probably is, yeah. I think it's sort of... If it's really as simple as like a, a BPM um, and, a, and an absence of lyrics or something soothing that, that makes you relax into it, then it's that, that you're definitely not engaged with the, with the track in the same way that you would be if you're listening to something a bit more progressive and you're trying to understand how it was made. You know? um, do you appreciate this viewpoint or do you think that people who consume music on this seemingly basic or fundamental level aren't actual music fans, for example? Um, Jenny May Finn and I actually talk about elitism in music in one of our future podcasts. We pre-recorded some in, uh, in London. Um, and one of the things that we were talking about there is the way I, like I'll, choose, I'll choose to listen to stuff where... My ear, which demands my focus and attention really because I need to understand where it's going, how it's, how it's created and try to establish how it works really. Um, whereas I think Jenny May was talking about um, certain things that she puts on just because there's a familiarity in, in like the beat of it or the rhythm of it or you know some other aspect of it is is so familiar that it can be in the background and it can just provide like a, a sound bed for for the daily activities. I think that's what we were talking about. It was a little while ago when we had those conversations. But uh, So I'm wondering if, like, um, I mean, I just, a lot of the time I just operate in silence. and then But then I am prone to massive, debilitating bouts of anxiety. So maybe I should start listening to that. Um, but does it reduce music to background music? Is, and is that a bad thing necessarily? Or is it important? I mean, I think it's important to soundtrack your life at some point. Because I think there's a slight... Like when something good happens, there's a conditional memory that occurs. Next time you hear the song that you were listening to, when something good happened to you, you're probably going to feel some remnants of that good emotion or that dopamine or whatever it was that made you feel good last time you heard it. Um... And I don't know whether it's less important just because it's in the background. I mean, it's, if you're not prioritizing the thing you're listening to, does it become less of an integral part of your day? I mean, I actually can't answer that. Maybe you could use the comment section to 
help me <laughs> figure that out, really. Um, but the most important question, I think, is does this prove that music and the music scene should be prioritised more in society and in government policy? Not just part of the arts and culture policy, but also health. Um, now, the thing I always think about, uh, in the UK especially, is that music is, or it was, when I was at college, they used to say it was the... Um, it was the second biggest export that the UK had after steel. Um, so you'd imagine that if something's generating that kind of, uh, you know, revenue, you should prioritise it anyway. But if it has health benefits, then there's a double reason because you'll have a happy population making loads of cash because they're all doing music. It'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Um, use the comment section below to tell me what you think about this idea of music. Actually, well, it's not even an idea anymore. This proven theory that music can actually heal. Um, I think it's fascinating. Um, so let me know what you listen to when you're sad or when you want to feel pumped up or, you know, just let's let's have a little chat in the comments. Yeah, nice. Justin Hawkins rides again, again. So if I pedal on this E minor while I say, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, watch one of these two videos and keep coming back. It's a bit too foreboding. Maybe you should do that major. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and watch one of these two videos. And I'll see you next time. Okay.